We're going to talk a little bit about R squared, what's also known as the coefficient of determination. R squared is a measure of how well a model fits observed data um, in the case of linear regression. We're going to talk in terms of simple linear regression um, for simplicity, although the concept applies to multiple linear regression as well. So to do so, we're going to kind of revisit this example we've looked at before, looking at the relationship between um, gestational age, okay, which is roughly the length of the pregnancy um, in days, as well as the head circumference in centimeters of 39 um, babies. In the case of simple linear regression, R squared just happens to be Pearson's correlation coefficient squared. So um, if we were to look at the example here that we've worked through, we found that Pearson's correlation was 0.78. So the R squared, 0.78 squared, comes out to be 0 0.608, or roughly um, 61%. So let's get to talking about what this um, R squared or coefficient of determination actually means. The first thing to note is that um, since the correlation takes on values between negative 1 and 1, R squared is going to take on values between 0 and 1. Okay? And values closer to 1 indicate kind of a better fit. So first let's write down the kind of conventional definition of R squared. R squared tells us the percentage of variability in Y that is explained by our model. And in this case, we're going to fit a linear regression model, we're going to fit a line. So what's the percentage of variability in head circumference that gets explained um, by our regression line or by our regression model? We found that this is going to come out to be about 61%, right? So 61% of variability in head circumference can be explained by our model or by the gestational age. A reminder that R squared takes on values between 0 and 1. Okay, but this sentence here, what does it actually mean? Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to try and visually get at the concept of what is R squared? What is it trying to work out in terms of looking at this plot and drawing out all the concepts that go into R squared here? What will help you is if you can kind of reach back and recall um, some of the concepts you learned in ANOVA, okay, or analysis of variance. There you learned about how the total sum of squares can be broken up into um, sum of squares explained by x, sum of squares that's unexplained by x. Right, or there it's called um, sum of squares between treatment, sum of squares within treatment. So we're going to look at the exact same concepts. It's actually the identical concepts here. Um, but we're going to look at it in terms of linear regression and how it fits in there. So first what I'm going to do is for all of these observations here, each of them have a y value or a head circumference. And here I'm going to draw in the mean of y. Okay, so this is the average head circumference of all these observations. If we look at how far is each individual from the mean, okay, the overall mean, this is going to give us an idea of the total variability in head circumference. So let's just write some of that out here. The total variability, and I'll just put it in quotes, can be captured by the sum of squares total. And here, we're going to sum over all of the observations how far is the observed y value from the mean y, right, the mean y squared. Or we can think of it in notation, we're going to sum over all these observations how far is yi from y bar squared. Or in terms of the picture, we're going to sum over all these observations these distances squared. So take this, square it, add it to this squared, to this squared, add it to this squared, this squared. Right? For all these observations, take these distances, square them, sum them all up. You can also notice this is the top half, right, the sum of squares, is the top half of the formula for a variance. Right, so just a reminder there, we're going to work out the variance of y. You're summing right, over all the observations. How far is each y from the mean squared over n minus 1? So the top half of this formula, we call it a sum of squares. 
Here's the sum of squares or the total variability in y values. Now, what we can do is we can divide the total sum of squares into two parts. That which is explained by our model and that which is unexplained by the model. Um, I'm going to get to showing you how we can do this visually. Okay. You can take a look at the algebra if you want, but I always find uh, myself looking at the picture um, is usually a bit more helpful, at least at first. I find I'm a visual under learner understander, and then I can go back to the math and work my way through that. And so to do that, I'm going to pick on this one observation here, just to highlight the concepts. So we want to take the total variability in y and separate it into two parts. How much is explained by our model? How much cannot be explained by our model? So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is draw in the model. So we're going to fit some regression line through here. Well, let me do it using this here. So this is our regression line. Our predicted y value is b0 plus b1x, fit some line through there. And now, like I said, we're going to pick on this observation here. This distance squared is contributing to the total sum of squares. And we can see now we can divide it into two parts. We'd say for this person, right, with this particular x value, we wouldn't expect them to have the average head circumference, right? Their age is older than the average. Our model would predict them to have this here, this to be their head circumference. So we can explain this. This is explained by the model. In other words, out of this total variability, we'd say they shouldn't be sitting on the overall mean. They should be here, right? The mean y given the x. So again, a reminder, we can also write this as the mean of y given x. For this x value, here's the mean y. They jumped a bit above the line, and we can't explain why, or our model can't explain why. Right? This is random variability or unexplained variability. So this here is the chunk we're going to say is unexplained by our model. If we were to take these distances for all of the observations, square them, sum them all up, that's going to give us the sum of squares explained by our model. It gets lots of different names. Sometimes it gets called the sum of squares model. Um, sum of squares regression, sum of squares treatment, tons of names for it. This one here, that which is not explained by our model, we call that the sum of squares unexplained, or the sum of squared error. Okay, um, which should be a familiar term when uh, when working through um, linear regression. So essentially we can take the total sum of squares and divide it into sum of squares explained by our model, sum of squares not explained by our model. The slight flaw with this picture is I've drawn these distances in you know, absolute um, deviations. The sum of squares are actually this distance squared plus this squared. Okay, so when we go on all of these in squared scale, then sum of squares total is equal to sum of squares explained plus sum of squares unexplained. So the r squared ends up being the sum of squares that are explained by our model divided by the total sum of squares. Looking visually, with having noted the slight flaw in this picture that it's on the deviations where this, the mathematics is actually these deviations squared, but we can take out of this total how much is explained by the model. So the total is in the denominator, right? The explained is in the numerator. Okay, so again, it's going to do it for all the observations, and it's going to do them in squared units. You can also write this out as being the, if you want to use these terms, the sum of squares model over the sum of squares model plus the sum of squares error. So again, out of the total sum of squares, under total variability in y, how much can be explained by the model? 
And this gets expressed in lots of different ways. I'm just going to write it one more way so that you might end up seeing it. 1 minus the sum of squared error over the sum of squared total. Right, so again, out of the total variability in y, how much cannot be explained by our model? Subtract 1 to get how much can be explained by our model. So this is kind of the visual representation of r squared. Hopefully, this has given you a bit more insight into what this sentence actually means. Right? Out of the total variability in y, what percentage can be explained by our model? Right? Or what's the percentage of variability in y that is explained by our model? Now, it's important to mention um, a few more things here. There's this idea of an adjusted r squared. Okay, and essentially what this is, without getting caught up in the formula, okay, I'm not going to write the entire formula because that's going to lose the concept, but what it ends up being is the r squared, okay, this exact r squared here, minus a penalty for the number of x's in the model. So this becomes more relevant in multiple linear regression. Okay, and what this is trying to do is suppose we were to add to our model x1 and x2. Okay, so adding a second x variable to our model, which we're going to get to when we talk about multiple linear regression. Now, what's going to happen? If this variable x2 is completely unrelated to y in reality, in a sample, there's always, always going to be some slight association. Right? Take two variables that are completely uncorrelated. Take a sample, and there's going to be some small correlation between the two. Right? Again, if in reality x and y have a correlation of 0, in a sample they might have a correlation of 0 0.08 or negative 0 0.05. Right? There's going to be some um, correlation close to 0, but not exactly 0. So every time you add some additional variable, it's always going to bump up r squared a little bit. Right? That additional variable is going to have some weak association with y. This is trying to counteract that. Okay, so if you're adding x variables that are completely unrelated to y and only bumping up r squared slightly, um, they're going to try and counteract that by penalizing for that. Okay, again, you can explore this concept on your own if you want. Take a data set that you have. Um, let's just suppose your data set has 100 observations. Randomly generate another variable, x2. You can get software to do it, or just get a column of 100 numbers, put in a bunch of random numbers. Add that to your model, see what happens. Your r squared is going to go up a bit. Okay, or calculate the correlation between this variable that you made up and the outcome, and there is going to be some slight correlation between the two. So that's what the adjusted r squared is trying to do. In a practical sense, there's a pretty um, trivial difference between the r squared and the adjusted r squared. Um, but I guess worth noting, the adjusted r squared doesn't have this exact interpretation there. It's not quite the percentage of variability in y that's explained by x. And I just want to close on mentioning some of the limitations of r squared. Okay, so it's worth mentioning here that we use our observed data, our sample data, to build a model, right, to estimate the slope and the intercept. And then we use that same data to calculate the r squared. So essentially the r squared is looking at how well can our model predict the data that was used to build our model. Okay. So hopefully you can see there's a bit of a loop there. We use the data to build the model, and then we calculate r squared, which says how well can our model predict that data, which was used to build the model. Okay. So r squared is still okay as a measure of model fit, but it's worth mentioning there is that um, slight limitation. Other approaches to try and get at you know, better versions of, of r squared or better versions of model fit involve things like validation, okay, cross-validation. You can explore these on your own if you want. Essentially, they involve using a portion of the data to train or build your model, and then a separate portion of the data to try and predict and measure the R-squared on that. Right? How well can your model predict data that it hasn't seen before? Um, there's also um, leave, one out, um, um, leave one observation out approaches or other stuff like this, trying to see how well your model predicts new data. So again, the idea of validating a model is worth exploring, but it's definitely a separate topic and a much larger topic than we're going to cover here. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. Share our videos. Stick around, guys.
because we got lots more. Statistics is hard to say properly. And I'll sign up properly. Okay.